I'm, hey, and by the way, you don't do that to franchise quarterbacks with four games left. Aaron Rodgers is hurt. Tom Brady's banged up. Okay? Kyler Murray's banged up. You don't sit here and go like this. Well, you know what? A 70% Jalen Hurts isn't good enough for us to win, so we're going to put Gardner Minshew in. I think that tells me a lot here. Okay? Are, are we in agreement? Hey, man, we must be doing something right. We got even better graphics now. How you doing? <laughs> Welcome aboard, man. What an absolutely sensational time of the year. We are in the stretch run of the NFL. We're in the stretch run, man. This is where we're going to see seedings. This is where we're going to see true contenders. This is where people are going to fall off. This is where you're going to find out whether or not certain teams – like the Dallas Cowgirls are real or not real. Jerry, get in the way. Holy cow, man. This is without a doubt one of the best times of the year. I can't wait to see this weekend. I believe it's week 15 of the National Football League. And boy, I'll tell you what, there's some significant games. That Thursday night game too, Chargers and Chiefs, baby, that thing's going to be absolutely sensational. Now, as you know, how we start the show off, please hit the like button. My God, you guys were absolutely sensational yesterday. Really, the last couple months on hitting the like button. You get us over 100 likes every single show. Thank you so much for making this baby the fastest growing sports show on YouTube. Jacob Media, man, we can't thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And every single one of the Big Sills Army, you guys have made this bad puppy grow and grow, man. Like I said, I'm... I'm thrilled to death. Xander and I just love you guys, man. And we appreciate everything that you guys are doing for us here. Because without you, there is no Big Sill show. So we thank you guys so much. All right. Now, this is how we're going to do it. I see people lining up already. I'm going to get to you guys in a minute here, okay? Hang in there. I want to throw a couple topics off of you, okay? As you know, we had Seth Joyner on with us yesterday. I thought Seth was brilliant. Had a great conversation with him, too. After the show, man, he's going to come on once a month for us. We're so looking forward to having him on. Gary Cobb, you know, those guys have been absolutely awesome to the show. How great is it? We now have a mainstay in Seth Joyner and in Gary Cobb each and every single month here on the Dan Cilio Show. And as you know, you know, each and every single Monday on the National Football Show, you know, we have, we have Gary Cobb from Fox 29. So it is absolutely awesome. All right. So I'm not sure if you guys heard the news today. I was on with Harry Mays earlier, and we did the middle, which is always great doing it with Harry. I love broadcasting with him. I think he's such a pro. But we had some news from John McMullen, our very own John McMullen, our NFL Eagle insider. And he reported that Gardner Minshew and Jalen Hurts were taking reps, and they were taking equal amount of reps because – it seems right now that Jalen Hurts is still a little bit banged up. Now, is this gamesmanship? Are they trying to make it so that publicly you're trying to throw that out there that Washington has to game plan for both Gardner Minshew and for Jalen Hurts? There could be some of that as well. But why in a stretch run here are you throwing that out right now? Are you trying to get some type of sportsmanship, gamesmanship, advantage against Washington and a guy like Ron Rivera? Ron Rivera is not going to bite on that. He's going to have his football team prepared for both guys. Now, does that mean more work, more study work, more game film? You know, Ron Rivera is going to have his football team prepared. He's one of the better defensive coordinators in the NFL. That's where he cut his chops. He cut his chops on being a hell of a coordinator. I thought he was a fantastic coordinator for Marty Schottenheimer back in the day, even North Turner, when they were with the Chargers in San Diego. He was fantastic, and he'll, he'll be ready. But I think the real thing is, why would the Eagles throw that out? You think they've made their decision up? This makes me believe that they've made their decision. And I think they're going to do everything in their power to upgrade the position. Now, follow me here, guys. I don't think they're saying, 
Jalen's out in 2022. I don't think they're saying that. I'm saying, I'm saying this. I think they've come to the conclusion that they're doing this. Well, if I could get Deshaun Watson or Russell Wilson, why wouldn't we upgrade? We've talked about this in the past. If I can upgrade, I'm going to do it, right? I'm going to do it. What's wrong with that? It, are we comfortable with that? Hey, Jalen Hurts may get 2022, but it's not set in stone. That's how I read this because, look, man, I'm a, and by the way, you don't do that to franchise quarterbacks with four games left. Aaron Rodgers is hurt. Tom Brady's banged up. Okay? Kyler Murray's banged up. You don't sit here and go like this. Well, you know what? A 70% Jalen Hurts isn't good enough for us to win, so we're going to put Gardner Minshew in. I think that tells me a lot here. Okay? Are, are we in agreement? Okay? Are we in agreement that they've decided already on the direction that they're going? And I think the direction is this. We're going to do everything in our power to upgrade. And if we can't, we're going to be comfortable with Jalen in 2022. I think we come to that conclusion. Also, as I mentioned, Seth Joyner was on the program yesterday, and he said something. Oh boy, I'll tell you what. He said something. He said a bunch of stuff. And he believes that the Philadelphia Eagles he used the word botched. That's code for fucked up. The development of Jalen Hurts. And guess what? What a take. Sandra and I were talking about that. Man, he hit that thing right square on the nail. Think about how he kind of like laid out the mistakes that the Eagles made. Think about what they have done, you know, in, in New England with Mac Jones. And he brought this up, and I'll even say this. I added to the conversation, look at what they did when they were in Pittsburgh, when they got Roethlisberger from Miami of Ohio. What was the fundamental thing this year that they did with Mac Jones? Mac Jones was not going to throw the ball a ton of times. They were going to develop a running attack, strong in the O-line. They were going to play lights out defense. Hell, they spent over $300 million in player contracts in the offseason to plug holes on the defensive side of the football. And by the way, they've panned out. As of right now, the Patriots are the top seed in the AFC. I mean, they are a football team that you don't want to play in bad weather, right? And what did they do how they did the development with Mac? Like, again, two Mondays ago, they threw the ball three times. Now, albeit, I get it, and Seth even said it too. The weather dictated a lot of that. But still, you were not going to throw the ball ten times in that game. That was a game plan. Why did the Eagles do that from the jump? Why didn't they do that? You knew going in. How many times did Brian Baldinger come on this program and say that the Eagles have one of the top five offensive lines in the league? How did you not know that? You had to have known that just by watching practice tape, watching the old line dominate the defensive front. How did you not know that? There is no way. Now, does that come with the influence of Howie Roseman parachuting down in and saying, Hey, man, just like Seth said yesterday, they don't like running backs and linebackers on the Eagle roster. This is a Joe Banner, Howie Roseman deal. What, for whatever reason, they don't like linebackers and running backs. They don't spend money, and they don't spend assets when it comes to draft choices on those two positions. Shit, I can't remember the last time you guys drafted an all-pro linebacker. I, I can't. I mean, so he had really great points here. Really great. Do you, and do you buy into the fact? This also tells me a little bit. So wait a minute. Figure what Seth said here, too. He goes like this. Dude, the style that Jalen plays, that's not the style that they were trying to be. Then they realized who they were. You got a good glimpse of what the Eagles want at the beginning of the year by doing this. 
We want to be a passing team. Then all of a sudden they came to the realization, yeah, but this is who we are. And I'm not sure the Eagle front office is comfortable with that. I don't think they're comfortable with being a team like Tennessee. I don't think they like that. They want to be a team more like the Chargers. They want to be a team like the Rams that throw the ball down the field. That's more in their alley. But then they realized who they are. You know, it's one thing to want something. It's one thing to sit there and look at the Ferrari in the, in the window and go, man, I really want that. Then it's another thing to look at your bank account and go, yeah, but this is who I am. Okay? You can want all that stuff, motivates you, all that. But this is who I am. I'm not that. I want that. But this is who I am. And I think a lot of organizations struggle with that. Come into grips with who you are. New England doesn't. This is who we are. This is what we're going to be. You just spent 21 years being with Tom Brady, and then you came to the conclusion, we cannot be anything other than, let's go back to the fundamentals of 2001 when we had Tom Brady. Let's run the hell out of the ball, play lights out defense. We're awesome on special teams, and let's be that team. And that team has transformed them into being the top seed, like I said, in the AFC. All right. Let's get to your comments. You guys know, look, again, each and every single day, we flood it up here. By the way, hour two, our Hall of Fame voter and from Sports Illustrated, Howard Balzer, is going to be with us. He also covers the Arizona Cardinals. Are you still buying the Cardinals as one of the top three teams in the NFL? We'll talk to him. That'll be an hour two. I set it up that way so that we can get everything going here. And as you guys know, like I said, you guys hit the like button right out of the gate. We take your thoughts, I read them, we go back and forth, and we have ourselves a hell of a time here. So we really appreciate it, and let's start it off with Chris. We lit up the Falcons with the pass, and Nick got pass happy. Yeah, that was fool's gold, right? East Side Monster, they want a flashy cherry red Corvette. That's right, dude. And guess what? That's not who they are. You're more of a F-150. You're more something like that, and there's nothing wrong with an F-150, dog. It's reliable. It's durable. It's bad weather, good weather. That's who the Eagles are. The Eagles want to be a Ferrari. They're not. They're an F-150. They hate the fact that they can't be the Bentley. Okay? Chris said Ford's a trash. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Right? You're not the Ferrari. How many Ferrari offenses are there in the NFL? Let's take a look at that. Packers, Bucks, Rams. But look who's signal calling for them. These guys are all elite throwers of the football. Kansas City. Okay? Kansas City. All these guys. Incredible, man. You got Jalen Hurts right now. This is who you are. Nothing wrong with that. Tennessee, by the way, is the number two seed in the AFC. And they got Ryan Tannehill. I guarantee you, people in Tennessee are having the same conversation with us uh, or like us going like this. Man, we got Ryan Tannehill. This guy sucks. He's the two seed in the AFC. And they hate who they are. Right? Michael says... They're trying to build a dome team. We play in Philly. <laughs> Boy, there could be truth to that. Dude, I, don't, I hate dome teams. Those dome teams all get killed outside, too, when they have to go on the road. Every time, you know, I'll tell you this, man. Uh, and, and I'll tell you something, Michael. The greatest home field advantage in the history of the National Football League was taken away from the Minnesota Vikings once they put the lid on the stadium. Man, when you used to have to go up to Metropolitan Stadium, and play in minus 30 degree wind, ice, rain, snow banks, slush, and you had to go up to Minneapolis and play outside like that? Why do you think the Vikings were so dominant back in the 70s and early 80s? Nobody wanted to go up to that place and play. I think that's one of the reasons why the Buffalo Bills 
have a great home field advantage at their dome or at their place, I should say. Ralph Wilson Stadium is an absolutely great home field. It's a great home field. That's why most of the time those northern those northern teams, outside of the Patriots, right? Every time they go to those sunny facilities when they're hosting Super Bowls, that's why they get their asses kicked. Let's see here. Chalk it up, Sports Philly. Michael, that's a slick comment. I love it. You guys aren't a dome, t- dome team. God, don't ever build your team to be a freaking dome team. Just don't. Saint says, hey, Sills, caught you on the middle of the day. Hey, man, I, I, I love Harry Mays. I really do. I, I, I really love Harry Mays. All right. Guys, can I throw this at you Hill, here? If I were to tell you this, Let's play a game here. What quarterback is trending to do these numbers? 3,730 passing yards. 28 touchdowns and six interceptions. 63.3 completion percentage. And a 96.6 quarterback rating. Who am I talking about? Who am I talking about? I'll do it again. 3,728. Okay. 3,728. 28 touchdowns. Six picks. 63.3 63.3 percentage in completions and 96.6 QBR. That's Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz is going to have 28 touchdowns and only six interceptions this year. What did you guys do to him in Philly? That's a franchise fucking quarterback. What did you do to him in Philly? You mean to tell me Frank Reich has made that much of a difference? And they got the Patriots this weekend. So this guy's on pace for 4,000 passing yards, 28 touchdowns versus six picks. And you call this guy a loser? I'm, I, I, I must not be reading these right here. Why did you dump him? Because he had an ass with the quarterback they drafted in the second round? That sounds like an organizational thing to me. You needed to do everything in your power to make sure that that guy felt comfortable. Hey, by the way, Aaron Rodgers got butt hurt when they drafted Jordan Love. So when Aaron Rodgers got butt hurt, I get it. He's got a little different of a resume. And maybe if he got butt hurt, you should listen. Gutekets had to listen, and so did Murphy. Those guys needed to listen more because that guy is a first ballot Hall of Famer, whereas Wentz hasn't built that asset up yet, or I should say that that commodity up in his locker room yet. But guys, Chalk It Up Sports Philly says that he didn't want to be here. Did did he really say that? Or is this another one of those reports where people are reporting that he didn't want to be here? The same people that reported that Russell Wilson didn't want to be here. But again, Russell Wilson had to address those comments and say, I never said that. Carl says Wentz is on his honeymoon. Wentz ain't on any honeymoon. Don't think that for a second. There's no honeymoon. He's got to prove that he is not that guy last year in Philly. He's got to prove he's not that guy to people in that locker room. Now, I saw somebody said earlier, Jonathan Taylor, no question. Jonathan Taylor has made an enormous impact, okay? He's made an enormous impact on Hurts not having to carry the mail, okay? Quarterbacks get butt hurt nowadays, guys. 
When somebody looks like they're going to draft their replacement, why do you think they went to Tom Brady? And they said, hey, Tom, we're going to draft Kyle Trask. They even told Tom Brady on draft day they were taking a quarterback in the second round. They took the kid from Florida. They didn't want Brady to get all sideways. 44-year-old, seven-time champion Tom Brady was told, hey, guess what? We're drafting a quarterback, Tom. They gave Tom a heads up. They gave Alex Smith a heads up in Kansas City. They gave Jimmy Garoppolo a heads up. By the way, Jimmy Garoppolo has shown nothing but leadership this year. In my opinion, Jimmy Garoppolo should be the comeback player of the year. If he gets that team to the postseason, he's the comeback player of the year. With all the shit he's had to deal with, bringing in Trey Lance, them kicking the tires on Matthew Stafford, all of that, man, that is really an unbelievable opportunity. Hey, man, I got to give my boy some credit here because I just found a better comeback player of the year. You know, Garoppolo was injured last year, so they'll probably go there. How about Carson Wentz as your comeback player of the year? Oh, my God, Philly. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on for a second. You're telling me the comeback player of the year is going to come down between Garoppolo and Wentz. And you let that guy go. Nick, yeah. Nick, I think it's Wentz. What do you think the media in Philly respond to that if he wins that award? Wow. I, I'm kind of caught by it. Who's a better quarterback, Wentz or Hurts? <laughs> Here's Jalen's numbers and what he's trending to. 3,000 passing yards. Actually, it's 2,997. 16 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. 60.1 completion percentage. 83.9. And quarterback rating. You downgraded from quarterback. The Philadelphia Eagles downgraded. You don't want to downgrade again. Because the only place you're going to downgrade is to the seller of the NFC East. You downgraded. Wentz is on pace for 37 100 passing yards and 28 touchdowns versus six picks. And his team is in a position to make the playoffs, and they got a gigantic game against the Patriots this weekend. Nick, right? How he downgraded. How he downgraded. Just like he downgraded in his coach. You mean to tell me you think Nick Sirianni's a better coach than Doug Peterson? I don't think so. How about this? Nick Sirianni's a better coach than Urban Meyer will ever be. Nick Sirianni will never be the coach Doug Peterson is. Until he wins one of those shiny trophies. Yeah, but I won a Super Bowl. Why do you think John Gruden signed a $100 million deal? Why do you think some of these coaches are... How many active coaches? Let's take a look at that for a minute. Help me out, guys. How many active coaches have Super Bowl championships? Let's take a look at that. Belichick, Carroll, Reed, Tomlin, Arians, McCarthy, Harbaugh, Seven NFL head coaches out of 32 teams have Super Bowl trophies. Okay? You think it's that easy to win? Seven. Seven guys have championships. 
Kivo, it's a great comment. And that number is 927. Kivo just said this. He goes, Sills, you got to add the rushing, the rushing yards and the touchdowns. You're correct. That's part of the offense. Okay, you're you're right. 927 yards he's trending to, which would be incredible. Yes, Chris, John Harbaugh has one. Yep. Seven guys. And by the way, too, there's no question that's part of the evaluation. The versatility on being able to get out into the perimeter like that and breaking down edges on defenses. No question about it. No question. No question. YouTube user. Okay, hang on here. 215, Doug is a Super Bowl winning coach. However, he had very little to do with it. To do with the success, it was Reich, DiFilippo, and Carson before the knee injury. I'll tell you what, Frank Reich looks like he was a major part of that team, didn't he? Okay. It'll be eight when Doug P returns next year. Yeah, it just all depends if one of those coaches that won ends up getting fired. Could you see Jerry Jones making a move at head coach? If the Cowboys get knocked out in the first round, <laughs> Cowboys get bounced in the first round by the Rams or Buccaneers. You'll see a change in Dallas. Saint says Wentz was more worried about what people were saying about him. I don't know if I buy that. Okay, seriously. You know, I learned a long time. Eh, maybe that comes with age. Maybe because he's so young. Tebow comeback player of the year. Ugh. Yeah, Thomas, we got Andy Reid in there. Chalk it up, Sports Philly. We can't pretend Carson was ultra happy being in Philly, okay? He couldn't take the heat. Hey, dude, playing football in Philadelphia? Jason Kelsey says it best. Perform and win. Ron says Wentz is the far superior quarterback over Hurts. He had one bad year, and then they bounced him? They bounced him. Dion says, I still I still like Hurts. I do too, dude. This is hey, by the way, guys, let's make sure I'm not shading on. I'm not shading on him. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not shading on Jalen Hurts here. I'm just pointing out here. Will the beast Davenport? Wentz wasn't built for Philly. Dude, how many people are? Wait a minute. Randall Cunningham got the shit kicked out of him by the fan base at first. I mean, he had massive troubles with the Philly fan base. It was only in retirement that he understood what you guys meant and how your passions were. And, and for the record, Carson Wentz has never thrown shade on the Philadelphia Philly fan base. He's never. He was asked a question about it a couple weeks ago, and he said, you guys are blunt. Okay, that's not a that's fair. <laughs> Steven says Wentz had the spine of a fish. Hey, dude, you can't have the spine of a fish in Philly. That's for damn sure. McNabb as well, two two one five. Right? You see all those guys that performed in Philadelphia? They didn't realize what you guys were all about until they matured and grew up. Randall and Donovan. Yeah, man, maybe those guys were really just being fair. They get up off their ass every day, scrape the ice off their windows, go to work, come home, and they want to talk Philadelphia Philly football. Nobody's shitting on anybody, man. You know what what what's that famous what's that famous quote, man? I can't do it perfectly here, but I'm gonna say this to you. Hey, man, you know, we can shit all over our own, but when someone else does it, you got a problem. Okay, that's how I perceive your that's how I perceive your fan base. Same thing with the Patriots. Same thing with Steelers and Bear fans. Those are some of the most diehard Green Bay fans too. We can shit on you, but when somebody starts to do that, you're going to get a whole earful from a village. Spa City Chop, thanks for coming aboard. Kivo, thank you, man. I appreciate it. We still definitely downgraded a quarterback when it comes. That's right, man. You did. Throwing the ability. Hurts is an upgrade when it comes to running the ball. He is. He is. 
I'm back on the playoff bandwagon. Hey, smile. <laughs> That's a diehard fan, dude. Carson Wentz, come back. Can you imagine if he beats Belichick this week? His renaissance as a franchise quarterback will be complete. Guys, think of this for a minute. Brand, oh, wait, wait a minute. Paul says Boston fans are worse than us. I take that as a merit badge, dude. What, that you expect greatness? What's up, Carlos? Right? What, what? Hey, go out and do your job. That's why every time, hey, you want to know the craziest thing? You guys want to, hey, go to Twitter when Jalen Rager drops a football or he has one of them half-ass efforts. This guy, get him out of here, oh, man. Like, hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. I'm so happy I didn't have social media around, man. These people would have killed me. You mother, you suck, dude. We wasted a the 56 pick on you, you piece of shit. I would have went, oh, my God. I had people throwing hot dogs at me as it was. Holy cow, if he beats Belichick, man. Man, oh, man. That would, hey, yeah, hey, man. I want to hit more on that comment that Seth, Joiner said yesterday about botching up the um, development of Jalen Hurts. I want to hit up on that. Also, you know, we did the middle today, and, and I, I wonder if Xander caught me rolling my eyes. Do you know why? We had COVID-19 protocol talk. Dude, I was there good for three questions, and then I said, I'm done. I don't care. I, I, I don't care. Nobody wants to hear it, especially during the holidays. Okay, I get it, but I want to broach it a little bit because I think the NFL is coming to their senses and they're not following the White House. They're actually going to follow the CDC. Just some seconds on it. I swear to you, I will not bore you to death with it. You know, the other, the worst conversation I've ever had in my broadcasting career was when I knew and I understood what PSI was. You know, the PSI pounds in a football. Okay, Dan, this seems like benching by the front office. Is Hurts actually hurt? That's a great topic. We'll hit on that. Do me a favor, guys. Hit the like button. We'll get right back to you. Keep it right here on the National Football Show.